Hi viewers and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the mini series for learning the Curves Workbench in FreeCAD. We're on episode 11 and we're going to be looking at ISO curves. Now ISO curves allow you to leverage a face by creating a network of curves across them. You can increase the U and V of this network to how many you want to make this more complex and we can use those curves against the surface so we can take a number of curves and section out parts of this surface by using such tools as the join curves or the split curves we can use those curves to create additional surface upon so for instance I've pulled out these curves here And if say, if I wanted this part here or this part here, I can section up these and create curves against them and apply them back on my model. So we could take a section out here, or if we bring the model back, I could use one of these curves. Say this one here. And use that against the model to actually split parts of the model out. So there you can see we've taken a section of that car away and that section can be pulled back if we come back in. So we've got the cut and the trim face which is there. And we can bring that out. So I'm going to show you how to use that tool and how to use the join curves and the split curves and learn about sectioning curves to leverage your existing geometry. If you like this video, please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. So to understand what an ISO curve is used for, and how to create it, we're going to create a simple object in there. I'm going to use the part, you can use the part design or wherever you want, and I'm going to use a simple cube, and we're going to create some curves along this cube, so some curved faces. We're going to use the fillet tool to do this, so I'm going to click on the fillet tool. Now we've got selected shape here of the cube, which is the one we want. If you haven't selected a shape, then just drop this down and select it and we can select some edges to create this upon. I'm going to use faces. I'm going to select two faces, this face and this face. You can come into the radius and just change that to four millimeters. Hit OK. We've created some curved edges along there. Now we've got one with a single face and we've got one here with three faces. So we're going to be using both of these and trying the ISO curve out against them. I'm going to jump into the Curves Workbench and we're going to make an ISO curve along here. Now an ISO curve allows us to take a face or a set of faces like so, control clicking those faces and you'll see this object here has been enabled. So ISO curve. So when nothing's selected you can see it's disabled there. Select the fillet, still disabled, you have to actually select some faces. So we can select one or multiple in there. So I've select multiple and then select the ISO curve. You'll see those faces have been divided up. Now what's happened is actually created a number of objects over here. Three ISO curves and we can delete these because I only want one to work upon. I'm going to work upon this one here. So you can see it's made up of a number of lines dividing up that object. Now I'm going to come over to the fillet and just hide that. And you can see we've got the shape left over with that ISO curve. So there's a network of curves along the U and V direction. And you can see that by coming down here, we've got the U and V of five. So we can increase these. So I'm going to increase one to 10. So it's the U increase to 10. And also let's increase the V to something like 12. You have different values in here. Each of these lines are selectable. So what this allows us to do is actually attach something to those lines. 
For instance, we can attach a, a freehand B spline in here. So I can select a number of these like so. And let's go across and across here and create a B spline that curves its way across there. We can see how that hugs that surface. And we can change these as well by adding, pressing I to add another point. And then you see that point is above. We can click that point and then control click, say here, and pressing S to snap it. And I'll snap it across there. So we can create some geometry across here with that. Or oh, let's get rid of that. We could section out different parts of these lines. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say we'll take, I'm holding down control and selecting a number of lines here. We'll take those four lines. Now I want to create a shape in here. We're going to indent that into the underlying surface with our Boolean tools. Now to do that, we need to extract out these lines. I'm going to do that by clicking on one and using the drawing curves. I'm going to do that for all of these. Now it's important the way you do this. And uh, that's like this one in here. So first I'm creating join curves from here. And then I can select on the one of these other curves that's not a join curve and press space to get rid of that. Or I can come over to here, press ISO curve and press space. So just hiding those ISO curves. So what we have now is four curves along here. What I need to do is take this part inside here. Now, how would I do that? Well, what we need to do is use something called a split curve. This is the reason why I've created these join curves first, because we're going to use these join curves again. And we're going to be using them to divide the curve up. So where it intersects here, we're going to place a vertex on there. So let's first get some split curves in. You'll see the reason why in a minute. So this one and this one, I'm going to create split curves against them. And click on the split curves. That's create a split curve against those two. The reason why I was able to create a split curve against those two is because there is space between these. They're not joined by another curve that I've just selected. Select those two, hit the split curve. It's creating a split curve there. Inside that, you'll find the join curve, which we can bring back. Now, you can see we've got a vertex in the center of those. We don't want those. So we can select both the split curves, like so. Come down to our values. We can either click the button on the end and clear out that value by hitting delete, or let's just cancel that. We can come in and delete the value in here. If I hit enter now, we can already see that those vertexes are gone. So we've got one single line that we can use with a split. Now I want to section these split curves at this point here where this line, this join curves intersects. Now if you look at the cutting objects here, what we can do is take one curve and we can click on the cutting objects. Now it's important to note that anything in here we can split against as long as they're intersecting that line. So for instance, this line here, we can use this line because it's in here, join curve one and this line, join curve three. We can't use this line obviously because it doesn't intersect it. But if we have any other lines that are intersecting here and it's not on our list, then we can't use them. We would have to create another object, like another join curve against those. Let's hit OK. You can see we've created a split there and there. That's right on that line here, which is perfect. We've now got a vertex across there. And we can highlight that line. That becomes a single line. And that's the first edge of our internal line. So to highlight this line, you can see we've got the edge that goes right away, all the way along here. We don't want this edge here. We want to split it along there. Do the same for the other one. And we're gonna do the same using these two. So click on the cutting objects. 
move this aside and control click this line. You can see it's highlighted in here and this line here. Hit OK and that's split there. So we've got the top and bottom of the lines that we want to use. We want to create a split curve along here now. So come out to split curve. Click the split curve. You can see that split curve is there. We're going to do the same on the other side. And we do the same process. Control select both those split curves and the values, we just remove those values in here, there. So we've got a single line. Got single curves there. Now we want to split them. So at the moment you can see that when we roll over it, the line is one. So that vertex there is part of this line. Let's click this line here and use the cutting objects. Now, if we look along, we could cut against this line here. So let's click it. You can see the split curve is in here. And if we open this up, we can see join curve two is in here as well. So we could cut against that curve as well, because that's already in there. So let's try splitting that curve against this line here. Control select that line, which is this split curve here. Hit OK. Now let's have a look at our object. So let's split that nicely against there. Let's click on that object again, split curve two. Cut an object, you can see split curve zero one is in there. Let's add the other one in. So just click on the other one. And we can see the split curve has appeared in that list. Okay, so we can go back and add those in. And we've got that split against there. Same for this side. And come into the cutting objects. And we're going to just control select this one and control select this one. Hit OK. And you can see we've now split this. All those vertexes are in the correct position. And we're ready to go. So now what we want to do is create a single join curve that joins these together. So we control click each of these curves in here. So we've got a box and then come up to join curves. And you can see that we've got a curve now. Those split curves have highlighted there. Press space on there to get rid of them if we so desire. Or we can come in and just hide these individual ones. we now got the join curve. Let's go back to our fillet. We can see how that join curve sits on that object there. We're going to use the trim tool for this one. So up here, we've got this icon here that says trim a face with a projected curve. Now our projective curve is this one here. And we're going to control click the face and then use the trimmer face with projected curve. As you can see, that's trimmed in there, like so. Let's just delete that trim face a second and bring back the fillet. Let's try that again. So this time, we're going to select the curve and select the inside. So I selected the inside, inside the shape here, and we'll select the trim tool. That's trimmed it inside. So where you select has an effect on that trim. So that's just delete the trim again, bring back the fillet. So I'm going to select the curve and select this part here. Hit trim. And you see how that's trimmed and left the outside. Delete bring back the fillet, click the curve, and now click the inside and use the trim tool. And now we've got that face there. Now I'm going to come into this trim face and bring back the original fillet once I've taken this and give it some depth. So 
we've got this open up so we can bring them out that fillet like so and I'm going to click on the trim face and come over to the part and let's have a look and we're going to use the offset tool and this is also available in part we should have 3d offset here that creates a 3d offset as you see there and we can fill the offset we can make it inwards by using a minus number and I'm just going to put something like 0 0.2 on here so we've got that shape there so okay that and now let's come down where the offset is let's open this up and we'll see both the trim face in there which we can hide so that would just be the face sitting on top there and the fillet which we're going to bring back so now we've got visible the fillet and the offset and even the join curve is visible there so I'm just going to hide that join curve so you can see it around the outside just press space on that join curve and click the offset and have a look at it so you can see that's just sitting on top of there right so let's click the fillet now so we selected the fillet that offset is available control select the offset so what I've done is selected the item that I want to keep and the item that I want to remove and that's do a cut on there now you can see we've taken that object and we've indented that object in there so we've taken the cut out of there so in our next video we'll be learning about tracing and sketching using the sketcher and how you can utilize the sketcher along with the curves workbench to make hybrid curves so for instance we have a curve here as a top view and we have a curve from the front that creates the side view we then take these two curves and create a hybrid between them which follows the top and also follows the front or side and it allows you to make a curve in 3d space that we can use for tracing or modeling of complex objects.